finally my injectors just came in the mail with the pigtails now I can go ahead and start the final like last little bit before I can start the car I already got a whole five gallon of E85 I got oil I have power steering fluid I have distilled water and water water like I'm ready to go all right I got my nice little setup here here is the injector harness and we have to cut these off and add these on so I have some some uh, heat shrink tubing and I have my solder gun right here and we are gonna go ahead and do this one by one I just finished one and now I have like 11 more to go okay my injector harness is all done I got it all soldered shrink wrapped and electro tape and I believe everything is correct I don't know but um, now I have to figure out the issue with the fuel rail so here's the fuel rail right there's uprights for it that are these two little things and this goes on here pretty much and it is how you connect the fuel rail to the uprights but I only have one of these so my mission now is to see if I can make another one I don't know if it got lost in um, unpacking it or whatever but I just know that I only have one of these and I need to make another one whole fuel rolls in injectors are in all the pigtails are done everything's done I Got the stand-ups in. Everything is literally done. Like this, I, I've already put radiator fluid in it, oil in it, E85 in it. Things ready to start up right now. Unfortunately, I can't start it right now because Brendan decided that he needs to be here for my first startup, and he's working. He doesn't want to answer his phone, so I'm just eating shit right now. Well, I'm eating Chick-fil-A actually. Okay, so it's a couple days since. Uh, I filmed that last clip. I did start the car. I didn't film it because if any of you guys have ever done something like this before, you know the first start is like extremely nerve-wracking. You're listening. You're like every little thing is catching your attention. You're like, what's this? What's that? What's that? So I'll just give you the gist of it what, right now. What's going on? So I did drive it already. Um, it's pretty freaking sick. Uh, the only problems I was having is I had a coolant leak from one of the hoses from like right under the manifold where I deleted like the original oil cooler, the factory oil cooler, and I just put that line. I just, the, we, I used one of those tension clamps and it wasn't tight enough, so I just replaced that with a screw and hose clamp. That's perfectly fine now, I have no coolant leaks. It was overheating a little bit, it's because I didn't bleed it enough, so um, I bled it, I ripped it the other yesterday and it was pretty good, so that's fine. I did, in the moment, order a new Mishimoto radiator and uh, N1 water pump, which flows like a lot better. Um, that for whatever reason, the water pump got canceled. I got refunded. So I don't know if they're like out of stock or something, but that was before I rebled the system, and now it's, it seems to be okay. But I will still throw in the Mission Motor radiator. I'm supposed to help, so why not? I already ordered it, and I got a aftermarket uh, coolant temp gauge because. My factory one that's in the cluster is not working for whatever reason. The oil feed line, uh, the fitting like that goes into the turbo was leaking, so I replaced that like little gasket with an O-ring. Um, that held up for like a couple, I don't know, a couple like drives, and then uh, it started leaking again. So I ordered a proper like. It's like a clamp that you bolt in with a gasket onto the top of the turbo and then it has a 4AN fitting which will go to my feed line. Um, so that's coming soon. I just got a boost gauge and a boost controller in the mail which we'll be installing today. Um, I have to make my uh, wastegate pipe. I have to heat wrap some of like my oil drain line and whatever else I feel like is probably pretty hot. I'm gonna um, heat wrap the wastegate pipe. And then also, when I was driving it, I mean, it's, it's like loud. It's like like stupid loud. The exhaust is ridiculously loud, so I bought a small high flow muffler, hopefully to just like maybe take a little bit of the rasp out, um, maybe quiet it down just a tad. Like, I, I still want it loud, but I mean, it's like loud. So here's what we got going on. Here's the muffler. I'm telling you, it's like pretty, it's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be, but. It's got some little baffles in there, so it should help a little bit at least. And then we got, a, well, there's a boost gauge. There's a boost gauge right here. It's a manual boost gauge, so you literally just connect vacuum to it, and it reads the boost. It's the most accurate way to do it. 
Um, this is a timing belt because I thought I was going to do the water pump and while I'm in the doing the water pump, might as well do the timing belt. This is a little adapter that you can cut into um, your top radiator hose and put the fitting for the coolant temp. But I think I'm just going to put it where the factory, uh, the like dash one is because it doesn't work anyways. Here is what I'm going to start with for the screamer pipe. But I'm going to extend it and make it go all the way down really far away from everything that's important. This is a boost controller which we're going to hook up today as well. And this is the spring that popped off my turbo blanket that I have to put on and I forgot. Here we have a bunch of heat wrap, heat tape, all this good stuff, some vacuum fittings. So let's get to work. Also something to note is since that my battery is set up the way that it is, the positive terminal sticks up a lot. And it doesn't hit when I close the hood, but if I close the hood and then press on it, it sparks. And you can see I was messing around with it yesterday. And you can see that little right there. So I have to find something. What I'll probably do is maybe like 3M tape something here, like a piece of plastic. Or maybe if I can get a piece of plastic to cover the terminal, that would be perfect. And I don't have to worry about it probably ever again. But uh, Or until I relocate it at least. But so here is uh, the sensor that doesn't work. This is supposed to be for the factory gauge on the dash. There's one under here that is for the actual ECU. This one just tells the dash what's going on. It's not working. Um, the wire was frayed. I rewired it, still not working. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, let's see, everything else is plugged in and good. This is the oil fitting setup that is leaking. So that is going to get changed. Just a little bit of oil up here. That is the oil drain that we're going to be heat wrapping. And I'm looking right now. Um, I don't think I'll heat wrap anything else. Maybe I'll throw something on here. Because my oil drain line is so tight, if I take it off, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it back on with everything on there. So I have this uh, heat sleeve thing. Um, what I did is I just cut it to length. I cut it down the middle. And I have this heat tape. And I'm going to wrap it around there. They make Velcro ones. They didn't have them where I was at. So this is my idea. I'm going to just put this on, secure it with this, and maybe I'll go all the way around. I'll just kind of see how it looks and what's going on. Lighting's a little bad, but I managed to, let me see if I can zoom in to see. There you go. I managed to uh, basically, I literally just cut pieces of, of this heat wrap tape and I Remember I slit the thing put it on and then I literally just one by one just heat wrapped it all the way back So I'm pretty happy with that. It goes all the way up here, too And then over here on the drain I actually was able to take this off because I put another o-ring here Hopefully that's gonna seal this for now at least and then I zip tied this right here And this goes all the way down past where the wastegate would be so I'm pretty happy with that The more I look at this the more I really don't like it but I can't do anything else about it right now. Wastegate pipe. Oh, where'd it go? It's already in here, I think. Yeah, so wastegate pipe is in there. I have to actually pull it out real quick. I have to cut this flange off. And um, they supply... Oh, you know what? I don't even have the bolts for it. Damn, bro. They supply this so you can fabricate your own. And it has... I oh, know it doesn't have threaded holes. I don't know what I'm doing. So I just welded an extra piece here and it just tilts down a little bit more to give me some more angle. And <clears throat> when I was um, test fitting this before, there's an issue. Um, one being that because of the way that the wastegate is set up in here, down here, I can't get to the bolt that's closest to the manifold. Like there's like, it's really hard to get to. So what I think I'm gonna do, also because I don't have um, I lost my metal gasket. I have to use one of these shit ones. Here, this is the shit one. These are like garbo ass gaskets. I had a nice metal one. That's what's on the other one. And I have to use this shit one now. So what I'm going to do, I think, is pull the wastegate off. And like on the wastegate and on the screener pipe, cut these off and just full weld it on. So the screener pipe is completely permanently on the wastegate. All right, I just added another spring in here to raise the wastegate pressure. A little bit so the boost controller doesn't have to do as much work. So I just decided actually not to weld it. I just assembled it. I have the gasket on there and it's all bolted in. Before I put it back on the car and that should make it better, I think. Not sure how well you can see, but wastegate's back on. 
And all the way down here, we got our pipe that dumps right to the floor, right there next to the down pipe. So that should be perfect. Everything's heat wrapped on this side, it's good. Now we can hook up the boost controller and the boost gauge. I got my boost gauge set up. It's just zip tied there for the time being, but the line goes down, under through here. I drilled a hole in the firewall. It comes right through the firewall, right up, tees into this line right here, which goes right to the manifold. So that should be perfect. So here's my quick fix for uh, the risk of grounding my battery to my hood. Just like a little piece of plastic that's curved over and I zip tied it there. Should be all right for now. I've got to turn the car around real quick to be able to do the muffler and be able to reach everything with my welder. So you guys are gonna get a quick little start and exhaust clip and all that and hear what it sounds like. I'm gonna try to go quick though so I don't make everything really hot. Okay, so we're under the car. I'm trying to figure out where to put this. Um, I'm not sure how big of a difference it makes putting it more towards the front versus the back, but this just happens to be like perfect size for this little pipe. So I'm thinking I take this pipe off, cut the flanges off, weld them to this, and we're good. I don't know, I'll have to, I have to, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. That seems like the easiest, and then it deletes a stupid thing. Got the muffler in there, pain in the dick. But in doing that, I uh, messed up the alignment of the exhaust tip, so now I gotta fix that. I have really, really bad news. Yesterday, I was messing around with the car. Um, I kept popping off a coupler uh, because they weren't B-rolled, so I B-rolled all the intercooler piping, put the coupler back on, went for a little test drive, even though the oil feed is still leaking oil, and uh, Boost gauge, I mean, the boost controller was just not working at all. It was like over boosting like crazy. And um, I took that off and I went for a rip and I was ripping it and smoke started pouring out the hood, started knocking, not good. So I'm gonna start it up now and see if I, it, it will still do the sound. It should, I don't see why not, I was knocking super loud, but not good. I'm, I'm kind of upset, I'm really stressed out honestly. I actually got the oil drain in the mail today, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on first, just so I know it's not leaking from there, and then I can diagnose what the problem is. This is what is supposed to be here, and then this is a 4AN fitting, and it just literally screws on right here. I can't do this one hand. So there, it just screws on just like that, and it creates a perfect seal and shouldn't leak at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if the car will crank. Oh my god.
That is not good, dude. I'm gonna have to make some t-shirts or something and get some more money for this thing, because this thing's sucking my bank account dry. <sighs> I knew I should have just gone with the 2J, because 2Js don't have problems like this. They don't have problems. 2Js don't have... Mm. I guess I'll, I'm gonna pull out the uh, coil packs and the spark plugs and see if I can see anything in there, maybe... Maybe the timing's off and the valves are hitting the piston. Um, that's a loud ass knock, though. If I don't see anything, bro, this thing's gotta, it's gotta come out. I don't know how to read spark plugs, so like I'm not sure how good these are. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in order, though, just to, I don't know, because I feel like I should. Last one. Interesting, too. These are all iridiums. This last one's an HKS. So that's weird. I literally don't know how to read spark plugs at all, but I can clearly see that this one, I don't know if it'll focus, this one, the gap is much smaller, you can see, than the one next to it. Those two. Not that that would have like a big effect, I don't think. Also this one, number three, is burnt up here on the top and got a lot of stuff going on here. It looks like the seal is bad or something. So that's that's not good. I tried to get a look in there. I can't really see much because it's such a tiny hole and it's so deep down. But I don't see anything significant. Um, this hole right here though, a lot of sludge, definitely had a bad seal. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the valve covers off, I guess, see what's going on there. Actually, what I'm gonna do next is check out the catch can I'm gonna remove it completely and see what's in there because it was smoking like crazy from this like like white smoke all everywhere so I'm definitely gonna open this up and see if there's something in there there's actually not much in here which is interesting there is some gunk around here though and kind of inside you can't see inside but I don't know we'll pop the valve covers off okay let's see what the damage is under here Whoop, whoop, come on, get, get out, come on, come on, come on, there we go, yeah, it looks fine in here, I don't see anything crazy, definitely oil in the head right there, but uh, I mean, I don't, I still don't see anything that's insane right now, okay, we're gonna go for the second one, Don't see anything. Don't see anything crazy. Interesting. So I'm gonna eat something real quick and charge my camera, but I think I'm gonna end up pulling the motor tonight. Why they wanna be me? It's not what it seems. Running to the bank, putting wet on my Achilles. We been thumbing blue faces like they Washington's. Run from MIA up to Washington.